What's up everybody out there in YouTube world? This is Blackbeard coming at you again with another video. This is my boy Jolly Roger. He is my uh, juvenile ball python. Uh, we figured we'd tell you guys a little story together. Anyways, um, you know, I wanted to do another video on kind of something that always really bugged me about this country and, you know, the criminal justice system. And I've, you know, I've done a couple of videos on, you know, the Daniel Holtzclaw case and they've been, uh, you know, they've been real popular, um, or somewhat, you know, uh, you know, I actually got a few subscribers. You know, it's not too many, but to those of you who do subscribe, thank you very much. You know, we've talked about Daniel Holtzclaw in a couple of videos. You know, I really feel like it's a, it's, it's really just a tragedy. And, you know, again, I'm not even convinced he's necessarily innocent, but it's a tragedy how the system worked against him. It really is. And uh, I've got another story to tell you here about the system and how it absolutely can just destroy lives. And I want to tell you the story of Kimberly Long. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people have really heard of this case. It was out of California. And uh, what had happened was Kimberly Long was convicted, I think it was in 2006, please correct me if I'm wrong, of killing her then live-in boyfriend, a uh, guy by the name of Ozzy. And uh, I don't know all the last names of all the people involved in this, uh, so bear with me. I don't really have notes and I couldn't really read them anyways, I'm too busy holding a snake here. So. Uh, what had happened was is she she had a bit of an argument with her living boyfriend and uh, she left one night after uh, you know a quarrel and uh, actually today is my 12th 12 year anniversary to my lovely wife so I get relationship quarrels they happen so anyway she left the house with a male friend of hers and they went out and did whatever and uh, when she came home uh, she found Ozzy dead on the floor. He was bludgeoned to death. And uh, she immediately called the police. And of course, they started investigating the crime. And uh, so they started, they interviewed Kimberly. Uh, they asked her if she had killed, um, obviously she killed Ozzy. She, they gave her a lie detector test. She passed it with flying colors. And they interviewed the guy that she had gone out with. His name was Jeff, though I don't remember his last name. But anyways... Um, Jeff had said that she came home, uh, earlier than she had claimed and from her story. So that immediately rose suspicions. Like, why would she say that she came home later? Was it to, as an alibi? So, uh, Jeff's story, he, she came home at about 1.20 in the morning. And, uh, based on that they immediately gave up all their other suspects and just assumed that she did it what's up jolly roger how you doing big man isn't he beautiful i love this guy but anyways um the kicker here is that jeff died before he could give official testimony under oath so they had nothing to really corroborate that and with that evidence the case went to trial okay the first trial ended in a hung jury and i believe it was like 11 to 1 in favor of acquittal but because they didn't come to a unanimous decision it was a mistrial and they retried her they tried her again second trial they found her guilty of second degree murder and i mean i i, I just can't believe that they would convict somebody on that kind of on with that kind of evidence so anyways um the thing that really bugs me here is the judge i think his name was like Magers, Judge Magers, I think was his name. He said during sentencing, he said, if this was a court trial, also, you know, commonly known as a bench trial, uh, I would have found you not guilty. There's just not enough evidence. Now, bench trials are really rare. For those of you who don't know, a bench trial is when there is no jury. The trial happens pretty much the same way, but the judge makes the decision instead of a jury. Judge, or bench trials are extremely rare. They usually don't work out too well for the defendant. The defendant usually has a much better chance of getting off if they have a jury trial, so that's why they're extremely rare. But I've never heard of a case that a judge openly admitted that this person is innocent, but you found them guilty. And she, he sentenced her to life. Um, 10 years later, 
Uh, they come, she gets uh, a motion and they discover forensic evidence that he died well before 1.20 in the morning. So even though she came home, or even if she came home earlier, there's no way that she was there to kill him. She was out and the witness corroborated that. Um, she also, it was proven that she did not change her clothes and she had zero blood on her. So what happened was they released her. Um, but they released her under the guidelines that she had an inefficient defense. And this is the worst part of the story. She is out of prison now, but there are currently prosecutors in California that are trying to put her back in prison. And the idea being, their thought process behind this is, well, the judge thought she was innocent. So obviously the defense attorney did a good enough job. So the motion to release her based on ineffective counsel isn't right. So we're, we should put her back in prison. And I'm thinking, are you fucking kidding me? You pretty much know this woman is innocent, but you're trying to use a technicality to put her back in prison. She has two kids. I think her kids were five and 10 when she was locked up. Five and 10, they took away the best years of her life watching her kids grow. Now she's out, she's back with her family, she's innocent, and these prosecutors are trying to use a technicality to put her back in prison, an innocent person. This is something that not a lot of people talk about. This is a tragedy. It's not bad enough that she lost almost a decade of her life for nothing, but that they're trying to use a technicality to put her back in prison is just beyond belief. We can't trust the system here, guys. We can't. This is the kind of stuff that happens. Prosecutors want wins. They want to put people in prison. That's all they care about. We need to fight this. We need to make sure that Kimberly Long does not go back to prison. And we need to fight for innocent people who are being locked up. Because there are more of them. There are, I guarantee you, there are hundreds if not thousands of people who are serving long prison sentences for absolutely nothing. And the public just forgets about them. Because obviously the majority of people in prison are guilty. So they don't want to deal with prison. As far as they're concerned, if they're in prison, they're guilty. They forget about them. Lock them up, throw away the key. We can't have that mentality, guys. This story should tell you everything you need to know about this. And that we can't necessarily trust outcomes of trials. We need to dig deeper and we need to really find out if these people are guilty or innocent. This story absolutely broke my heart. And the fact that it's still not over is absolutely unbelievable. Um, but that, that's really it, guys. Hope you guys like my video with Jolly Roger here. Uh, hopefully I'll have him around for future videos. Uh, but anyways, it's, uh, it's been nice uh, having another video and being able to communicate with YouTube a little more. Try and post a few things here and there. Um, you know, again, I don't have a lot of subscribers, but the ones that I do have, I really do appreciate. And uh, all right, this is Blackbeard and Jolly Roger signing off. Have a good night, guys.